Thank you all so much. I'm so happy that Yoi, who is amazing by the way, set me up so nicely by doing her performance as an homage to rivers and river goddesses because rivers are something that happiness experts spend a lot of time thinking about, in part because they inspire such awe and wonder, all these positive emotions that we know are associated with reduced stress and so on, but also because rivers can be a fantastic inspiration for the kinds of behaviors we should engage in if we want to feel happier. And this is the kind of thing that experts on happiness have been thinking about for a very long time. My favorite of these comes uh, from the ancient uh, Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, who has this famous book, The Tao Te Ching. Some of you might have read it, in part it's because it's the second most translated book on the planet after the Bible. So it's been a bestseller for almost 3,000 years, like really like high on the New York Times bestseller list, right? But that's in part because it has a fantastic metaphor about the way that rivers can inspire us to feel a little bit happier. Lao Tzu thought we shouldn't go for metaphors like going hard all the time or tough as nails. He thought we should be soft, soft like the water. He thought that happiness came from what he called the waterway, where you kind of go with the flow. And when you hit an obstacle or hit a hard time or hit a tough emotion, you don't push up against it and freak out. You just and to do what you would normally do, you allow it. And in doing that, Lao Tzu thought that our, we could allow ourselves to be like the water, deal with our negative emotions, and flow and be strong. You know, strong in ways that can carve the mountains that we see outside. That's what water is capable of, when it's just kind of going with the flow. And I love Lao Tzu's metaphor in part because this is not what we spend a lot of our time doing these days. These days, we do not go with the flow. We push it hard. We think everything is a race, and it's a race that we want to take to 11 all the time, pushing against all the obstacles, which is great to push ourselves, but we shouldn't push ourselves to the point that it's starting to make ourselves miserable. We shouldn't push ourselves to the point that we're no longer kind of being like the water and going with the flow, that we're pushing ourselves towards things like burnout and depression and anxiety. This is stuff that I know very well because I work with a population that's very type A, that pushes themselves very hard, but winds up having the mental health consequences that I'm talking about. I work with Yale students, these fantastic, smart Ivy League students who push themselves incredibly hard, but they bear a cost to this, just like nationally we're seeing with our college students, where 40% are too depressed to function most days, 60% report being overwhelmingly anxious, and more than one in 10 has seriously considered suicide. And so that was the origin of the class that you heard a little bit about. I wanted to teach students evidence-based strategies they could use to feel better. And it wound up, as you heard, getting pretty popular. This is what it looked like when I walked into class the first day. It was a, an amphitheater, basically, rather than a college classroom. But I think it's great and cool that college students really wanted strategies they could use to feel better. And there are lots and lots of strategies that I taught about in the class, but there's one in particular that I wanted to go back to, in part because it was inspired by the river. It was inspired, in fact, by Lao Tzu back in the day. It was strategies we can use when we hit against a negative emotion to allow it and feel better anyway, to not do the thing that we naturally want to do, which is to press it, push it down, you know, think of a river, it's never pushing things down, it's just kind of finding the crevices naturally to kind of ease through, and if you give it time, it works out. And researchers and scientists have come up with practices we can use to do that, to allow our negative emotions to be there in ways that aren't like forceful and like hard as nails, but allow and sort of copy the waterway. And one of my favorite examples of this is a practice I'm going to teach you all now. It's a meditation practice that, oddly enough, is also named after water. It goes by the acronym RAIN, which stands for Recognize, Allow, Investigate, and Nurture. How do we do this? So let's say you're facing a really tough emotion. Right? You get a tough email and you're feeling kind of frustrated, or you notice that you're feeling sad or angry. The key is then you sit down and say, I'm not going to do what I would normally do. I'm not going to go tough as nails and suppress and fight it. I'm going to be like the water, I'm going to be like rain. Starting with step number one, R, recognize. What emotion am I going through? What, are, you know, what am I dealing with here? How can I kind of pay attention and recognize the emotions I'm experiencing? Then you do the super hard step, which is the A, allow. I'm going to be like the water. I'm just going to allow this barrier to be there. I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to allow the emotion to be there just as it is. And then you do the next step, which is, is, is kind of a fun one if you're kind of a curious person like all of you are, which is the I step, investigate. I'm going to pay attention to what this emotion feels like in my body, right? Kind of notice how you're moving around in space. What's feeling tight for you? What are the cravings that are coming up? And the I step is powerful because there's so much evidence that emotions 
are in fact like a wave. Like when you start first paying attention to them, they might go up in strength, but over time, if you just kind of go with the flow, they'll go away. But the key is that you uh, don't end there. You do that final step of rain, which is N, and that's the step of nurturing. How can you take care of yourself? How can you embrace the softness of water to really take something off your plate, not push yourself, but kind of do the kind of thing that would allow you to sort of be? Evidence suggests that practices like RAIN can do things like reduce burnout in first responders and reduce negative emotions in palliative care workers. So this practice of kind of going and being like the water, allowing your emotions, can be a powerful one to feel better. And so that's why I like kind of taking you back a little bit through the modern happiness science, but also taking you back to some of the beginnings of these techniques. When we start to go with the flow, when we start to soften, when we start to be like the water, we can experience a happiness even through negative emotions that we never dreamed of. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much.